After ten years of war, the Trojan sentries noticed during the night that a flash from many flames lit up the skies over the Greek camp. There were large columns of rising smoke, as something very strange was happening. The next morning, scouts called the Trojan nobles to contemplate the miracle that had happened. The Greek camp had been abandoned, the Achaeans had left, but in that desolate scene a huge wooden horse stood out. The gigantic equine had been built from Greek ships, which no longer had sailors to command them, for they had perished in battle. That monument was certainly meant for the gods. They found a Greek man scourged and tied to a pole. He said his name was Sinon, and that he had been left behind as a sacrifice to the gods. This way the Achaeans could safely return home. Sinon was interrogated and asked why the Greeks had suddenly left after enduring a ten-year siege. He said that the Greeks had angered the goddess Athena, who was on their side. She was deeply offended by the theft of the Palladium, which was in the goddess's temple in Troy. As a result, a great plague spread among the Achaeans. Without divine support, the Achaeans realized it was impossible to conquer Troy and decided to return home. He said that the gigantic horse was an offering to the gods. Its shape was grandiose to prevent the Trojans from taking it to Troy. After all, the gods would certainly favor whoever possessed that tribute, and they feared that, with the gods siding with the Trojans, Troy would exact a ghastly revenge on the Greek city-states. King Priam, his nobles and priests, discussed what to do with the great wooden horse. Some wanted to burn it, but that would anger the gods. Others wanted to leave it where it was, but the glory of carrying that offering to the gods to the temple square in Troy was irresistible. Cassandra, the discredited priestess, begged the Trojans to burn the cursed monument, for it would ruin Troy. However, she was once again ignored, and they still scoffed at her, who had predicted years earlier Troy's defeat in the war. But the Trojans did not know that lurking inside the horse were dozens of Greek warriors. Among them were Odysseus, Menelaus, Diomedes, Pyrrhus, and Epeus, a magnificent carpenter responsible for building the gigantic horse. With considerable effort, the Trojans pulled the horse up to the gates of the city. The great gate was partially demolished so that the huge horse could pass through it. In a nearby creek, the great Greek armada was hidden. Thousands of soldiers were waiting for the signal to attack. The great wooden horse was stationed in the center of the temple square inside the city of Troy, and a great feast began. The whole city celebrated the victory over the Greeks after ten long years of war. The king opened the doors of the royal cellar and offered his entire stock of beverages to the people. Everyone was to celebrate that great day with joy and plenty. As night advanced, the city fell silent. The people of Troy were fast asleep after the long day of celebration. Suddenly, a trap door opened in the belly of the wooden horse. Dozens of warriors began to emerge from that hiding place. The Greeks stealthily initiated their way to control the city gates. The sentries were surprised to be attacked from behind by the heroes infiltrating the city. At the top of the wall, a signal fire was sent to the tens of thousands of warriors outside the walls. The gates had been conquered. Led by Agamemnon, the gigantic Greek army stormed the city and started a massive bloodbath. Unarmed young men and women were not spared. The bloodthirsty rage of the Achaeans seemed unlimited. Many Trojan men, even without proper weapons and armor, tried to stop the Greek advance. But Troy's fate seemed sealed. Nothing could stop them. Achilles' son led the men in the final assault on the royal palace, the last stronghold of Trojan resistance. The Trojan War was nearing its end.